Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be giving you the video that you guys were requesting over the past month. And yes, this video is going to be the only tank guide you guys will ever need. Since Battlefield 2042 will not receive any important updates from now on. And the main battle tanks won't be undergoing any big changes. Here's how the video works. I will give you some general tips for playing tanks. Things you will definitely need on the battlefield. And then we take a look at the in-game tank setups to see what setups should you play and what's the best you can get out of your tank. Before we start, if you enjoy the content and if you like this video format and want to see more of this, make sure to hit the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel because it only takes one click and you won't be missing on the future videos. So let's jump right in. So the most important thing to remember is that tanks in 2042 or let's say armored ground vehicles in general are weaker than you might think. And just from a comparison perspective, tanks in Battlefield 4 were more capable and generally stronger than tanks in 2042. Especially against attack helicopters and jets, tanks are pretty much defenseless and they can even destroy a tank in a single dive. Because of that, there are some things that you need to take control of, but the most important one is your own excitement. Sometimes you start chasing an enemy vehicle, you might know that there is a big bunch of enemies in a house camping, let's say, and the quick reaction to that is usually let's get them kills, right? Well, that happens a lot even to myself because you want an instant reward, which in this scenario is a bunch of freebies, and I can absolutely understand that. However, you need to think twice every time you find yourself in a situation like that because it's more likely to get you killed than get you kills. Most of the times, there are enemy engineers waiting for you, there are mines placed, and so many surprising elements that can cost you your life, so you really better think twice and not rush people too quickly. As I said, air vehicles, especially attack helicopters and jets, are super strong against ground armored vehicles in 2042, and because of that, you should be aware of them all the time. There aren't a lot of things you can do about them since tanks are almost defenseless against them. However, I would try to avoid them as much as possible, which is something very hard to do, but you can always have stingers, right? You or your squad mates can actually make them go away by sending them a missile, but you need to time it right before they go in for the dive and start shooting you. After the stinger, your squad mate should jump back right into the tank to avoid being killed by the helo. Kinda looks complicated, but once you do it yourself, you'll notice how effective it is. It makes them go away because a helicopter or a jet is very, very vulnerable when the flare is on cooldown. That's something that pilots try to avoid as much as possible and they're not gonna risk their life for yours. So that's something to keep in mind. This one leads to another point, which is playing with a squad or at least one squad mate who is willing to be in the tank with you. Well, the reason for that is that there is a reason why a tank has four seats. At least three of those seats are absolutely vital to unlock the maximum potential of a tank. Also for repairing, which is a big part of playing tanks in Battlefield, in almost any Battlefield game, you'll need teammates who can support you and help you with that. Two people can repair faster than one, and three people can do that faster than two. Also having more people in your tank means having more eyes for spotting the enemy, getting to know what's going on around you, what's threatening you, and generally speaking, more environmental awareness. For example, if there is an enemy somewhere behind cover or there is an enemy armor lurking in the area, it's more likely your teammates can see them while you're driving the tank. Just imagine doing all that alone and you'll find out how much there is to be done just for one person. I wouldn't say it's impossible, I know I've done that multiple times, but generally speaking, I'd rather not playing a tank when I don't have a squad mate willing to help me. You should always keep in mind that hitting a stationary target for any threat is way easier than hitting a moving target. Imagine you are playing as an engineer and you come across a vehicle, an enemy tank, let's say, which is just moving back and forth non-stop. It's going to make hitting that target way harder for you. The main reason why ramp is so overpowered in 2042 is exactly because its ability to move fast and that maneuverability helps it a lot to get out of bad situations real quick. So keep in mind to not stand still in one place as a tank it's going to make it harder for almost any given threat to hit you when you're constantly moving. I'm not saying that you shouldn't stop at all, but you shouldn't let it take a lot of time. Just try to not be stationary for a lot of time and you're good to go. And you should always play as an engineer when you're planning to jump on a tank. As I said before, repairing is a very common thing to do when playing a tank and that's something only engineers can do. And believe me, no matter how big of a squad you have in the tank, sometimes things go south and even you as the driver, you need to get out and start repairing. Also, sometimes you need to jump out and use a stinger or an RPG 
All in all, there is no reason not to play as an engineer when using a tank, and I think that's not rocket science, like it's common sense, but for the beginners, that's something to always keep in mind. And one more thing before we get to the setup, a tank is very vulnerable when flanked. Not a tank, but every armored vehicle, and the reason for that is usually when a tank gets flanked, it receives the first hit. That will put the enemy vehicle one step ahead of you, since you are the one who's surprised and needs to take control of the situation. For the attacking vehicle, everything is under control. Well, to not get flanked so easily, you need to always be aware of what's going on around you. One of the main tools that can help you achieve that is something called minimap. Most of the times, a target as big as a vehicle is spotted by someone, and just by developing the habit of checking the minimap every once in a while, not only people can't catch you off guard, but you can exactly do the opposite and be the one who surprises a flanking vehicle. On top of that, Playing with at least one squad mate is going to level up your environmental awareness and might in fact save your life, so make sure to always pay attention to your surroundings. And now let's go for the tank setup. So starting off with the driver setup, for your primary weapon you have three options, which is the impact shell, the high explosive shell, and the staff shell. Generally speaking, the impact shell is the one you need to be using for regular tank playing. Sometimes if you have some people in your team playing soft lamp, Maybe the staff shell can work since it can lock onto laser designated targets, but generally speaking, MPAT should be your go to cannon. For secondary weapon, I prefer having the 12mm coaxial HMG, which is a 50 caliber heavy machine gun. The fire rate is not much, but the firepower is amazing and I believe it's worth the trade. If you want anything with, let's say, more fire rate and less firepower, you can always go for the minigun, but in my opinion, that damage model of the HMG is just way ahead of the minigun, and I personally prefer to use that. Equipment slot number one goes to Thermal Smoke Package, which throws smoke in every direction around you and will misguide every missile that is locked and inbound to your position. You might not believe how much of a relief this equipment is when a locked missile is coming your way, but you definitely need to try this one out. And I'm pretty sure you guys are going to regret it if you don't use it. Equipment slot 2 goes to active protection system without a doubt. This system will destroy any projectile coming your way and it will be a huge lifesaver when going against jets and attack helicopters because they are the only defense system that you have against these vehicles. Your cannon can't literally reach up to them. You can't do anything. You can't run away from them, they're faster than you. The only thing that can save your life and give you some time to think about your next step is actually the active protection system. So it's a vital component of every tank. Make sure to always use it and always have it. Auto repairing system is not going to help you much when there is a diving attack helicopter or a jet coming your way. So always make sure to have the active protection system with you. For weapon station, which is your second seat, the 12.7mm heavy machine gun with thermal is your way to go. The thermal is what makes this one special, since it is going to reveal some sneaky rats across the map. If you want some more fire rate with less damage, the minigun with thermal should be what fits your playstyle, but in my opinion, the damage model of the 50 cal is just way ahead of the minigun, and that's what I prefer to have on my tank. Now for weapon pod, which is your third seat on the tank, the best option in my opinion is the rocket weapon pod. Consider this an anti-vehicle weapon for when you engage with enemy armor. Even if you play with only one friend in the tank, that one friend can quickly change the seat and use that rocket pod against the enemy vehicle. And this really proved to be an effective method. I used it with my friends and I think you need to give this a try as well. And lastly, for seat number 4, you have two equipment slots. Slot number 1 goes to Thermal Sensor Array, which is capable of spotting anyone in your viewpoint. Slot 2 has only one option, which is the Detection Pulse, and once active, it will detect anyone in the vicinity and reports their location to your minimap, which can really come in handy in crowded situations. With all that said, guys, the tank guide comes to an end. Hope you guys enjoyed and hope it was helpful. Make sure to let me know if you have any more experience with other equipment and if you think using them is better because we're all learning here and I'll be glad to have your experience by my side as well. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, stay cool.